All right, what is up, guys? Welcome to the Winter Forecast 2018-2019 detailed version. So if you haven't seen the, the actual forecast, uh, check it out up here. I'll pop it up right on the screen right here. Check that out or look at the uh, link in the description below. And I'll actually go over my forecast in that video. Um, I'm not going to go over my forecast again here. This is showing the techniques that I use to put this forecast together. We're unveiling the curtain, and I'm going to show you the six key factors that went into uh, forecasting this winter's forecast. Again, they're ENZO, PDO, Snowpack, AO, NAO, and Sunspot Cycle. I'm going to show you what the patterns look like for each of these and how this winter's um, patterns are developing. And then I'm also going to show you some of the weather models at the end of the video. Now, we're going to first go over ENZO. If you've already watch the winter forecast we went over it in that video so you can just skip this section if you've already seen this and we'll uh, talk about the other ones uh, later in this video so let's get into this thing all right factor number one is enzo now we could all be talking about this for an hour but we're just gonna blast through this for this video we can put a longer form out in the future this is el nino southern oscillation and we measure the temperature between tahiti and darwin if it's warmer than average it can favor el nino if it's cooler than average La Nina. This is there you're going to want to watch is this western half of this box. If that warms more than the other areas, it could favor a Modokai El Nino. And El Nino has got to be 0.5 degrees or warmer for at least three months. So it's got to be above this line here for at least three months. Anything in that green is a neutral and anything in that blue is a La Nina. Now watch what the models have. Okay, The models are actually saying here's your 0.5 degree line. We have just hit uh, El Nino. This was actually about a week ago or so, but we have just hit El Nino, um, or well, we haven't yet. It, we've hit the threshold, and if we have three months of this, uh, you know, we could be getting some new patterns developing here, okay, uh, that would favor an, a weak El Nino, and that Nino 4 area where that Modokai can develop, it's even warmer. So this is what a regular El Nino looks like. You got warm temperatures <clears throat> uh, off the coast of South America. This is what a Modokai looks like. It's usually a little bit further west. You can sometimes get cooling on each side. It's probably going to be somewhere in between this year. But uh, here's how uh, the past year has gone. You had really cool temperatures out there. And now the most recent frames uh, as we get into October, it's warmed a lot. So the ocean's warm. So what are the models predicting? This is uh, the winter right here, December, January, February. Uh, 0.5 degrees is this line right here. 75% of those models have a, a El Nino. Okay, some are borderline or a little bit below. But a lot of those have an El Nino. I tell you, the, the European computer model, the monthlies just came in uh, today and uh, it's forecasting, I think it's one degrees above average, so it's a little bit higher than these. And it's got a, a really cold east and a warm west. It's one of the only models showing that, the long range models. But uh, it looks very similar to my forecast. So 60%, 70% chance we're going to be in an El Nino according to the spread of models there. The Jams Tech has an El Nino. It doesn't really have a Modokai El Nino, it just has a regular one. but it has that as well. And so what does it look like when we have an El Nino? This is the general track. Sometimes your Pacific jet gets kind of bumped up and it's a little more aggressive in the south, you know, south, southern United States. You get wet and cool conditions. Polar jet streams diverted up to the north. You know, some ridging along the coast, warm temperatures. Uh, that's what a typical El Nino looks like. But a weak El Nino is a little bit different. That jet sometimes is a little bit further south. You get cooler temperatures across much of the northern and eastern United States, and also cool temperatures in the southern United States. And then for precipitation, it's uh, below average for the south central part, and then pockets of above average for, you know, southwest and east coast. Uh, but, you know, it might be closer to an, a Modokai El Nino, which looks like this. You get kind of a gradient across the U.S. where it's cold on the east half, warm on the west half. And then uh, precipitation-wise, it's kind of a flip for the south part of the United States where you get above average precip and then below average over here. And so I think it might kind of end up in between with maybe average out there and uh, slightly above average to much above average out here as you move eastward. So that's kind of what uh, I'm thinking for that El Nino stuff. 
Now, these other ones aren't as big, but we'll zip through these a little bit quicker. The PDO stands for the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. We're just measuring the temperatures up here south, you know, in the Gulf of Alaska and the northern Pacific here. And we get warmer temperatures to shove up along the coast like that. That causes a, causes a positive PDO. You get southerly winds bringing up warmer waters from the south from that El Nino. El Ninos can favor positive PDOs. And you'll get the jet to kind of bump up because of that. And it can uh, create some ridging out in the western United States. Then it can kind of dive south and bring cooling for the eastern United States. And so <clears throat> right now that's well, that's a negative PDO when you get cold temperatures. But right now it's, uh, it's actually slightly negative, but I think it's going to bump up to positive. It's actually been pretty inconsistent. This is uh, somewhat uncertain that it's going to do this, but I think it will bump up to a slight positive PDO by the time winter runs around. And uh, this is what it looks like when we have one. Again, warm west, cool east. Pretty similar to uh, the other things we've been seeing here. And how about a weak El Nino with a positive PDO? <clears throat> Just mostly a cold eastern United States. Uh, and that's what this winter could be like. So the next factor is snowpack. This is right now you know, a little bit above average. We got some snow all the way down close to the close to the United States here. And I think that'll continue to grow this week as another snowstorm comes. And then 2015, that big old monster Godzilla El Nino, whatever they're calling it, was actually a little bit below average, not a ton of snow in California, or uh, California, Canada. 2014, we had above average snowpack as well, kind of like this year. And so that can actually build, art, you know, outbreaks. It can build up a lot of uh, you know, cold temperatures. Those can slide down south. Uh, into the U.S. That could factor into some cold weather as well. The next one's the Arctic Oscillation. Uh, you know, this measures the s stratospheric circulation up in uh, the Arctic region. We're not going to go too much into that. But, uh, you know, when you get less circulation, what's going to happen is, well, when you get tighter circulation, the polar vortex just kind of stays up there. It's locked in up there. But when it's less cold, when you get less circulation, the polar vortex can kind of break off into pieces and it's less organized and it can dive south and it can actually shunt that area of cold pocket of air south into the United States, kind of like this. It goes like that. That's a tight circulation. That would be a, a positive AO and then boom, right there. It splits apart. That's a negative AO, weaker stratospheric circulation. And you can get these cold pockets to dive into the United States, bringing cold air outbreaks. Here's an animation of that. <clears throat> yeah, so there you go, right there, boom, just breaks apart, and you can get uh, some cold air outbreaks. Uh, so negative AO creates those cold air outbreaks, and look at that right there. Sometimes they'll dive out into the central and eastern United States, and you can kind of get that pattern uh, just like that right there, a nice trough out there. This is what they uh, look like, negative AOs, December, January. February, March, those are some years with negative NAOs, or uh, AOs, very cold across much of the United States, especially east half. Next factor is North Atlantic Oscillation. Um, this is just going to measure uh, high and low pressure out in the North Atlantic. You know, when you get uh, you know lots of uh, blocking high south of Greenland, you can get a negative AO, and these Motokai El Ninos can favor that, okay? This can create a wavy, wavy jet stream pattern, a very active pattern. Sometimes it slides up along the coast like that as you have a blocking high out there. Otherwise, you can get, just kind of get a really wavy active storm pattern, and it can bring up some storms along the east coast. This is actually good for the east coast snow lovers. So sometimes uh, these El Ninos can favor negative AOs. This is what it looks like December for temperatures, January, February, and March. Um, these are just some random years. And again, usually it's colder for the east half, and sometimes you get more precipitation along the coast if you get the storms to line up right. And then this uh, this one's a wild card here, the sunspot cycle. There's not a whole lot of research. Uh, it's very weak correlations at best that say solar minimums will favor colder winters. But you know, I think there's a little bit of research, but you know, not a whole lot. Uh, but I just threw that in there for that, and it's uh, this is right now we're in our solar minimum. So um, overall, I, I don't think we even need that. I think it's pretty. There, there's a lot of stuff that shows cold east half of the United States. Now, what are the models saying? Well, 
the CFS, I think, is out to lunch. So we're not really even using these models, except for this pattern right here. You got ridging out here and troughing out here. That's the general look for the winter. I think that looks pretty accurate. But the temperatures don't look accurate. This is way warmer than I think it's going to be. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just throwing that out. It doesn't even look good. Precipitation. Um, again, I, you know, I just don't like the CFS too much. But here's a, this is December right here, January, February, March. Oh, well, February. Okay. But southern U.S., lots of precipitation, probably good. But I think I'm going to disagree with at least the uh, east half. And then the west half is a little bit of a mix, below average, whatever. I just don't think that's the best representation. And then you got the Jams Tech, which is also warm. It's got a little bit of cool temperatures down here. I think that's also out to launch um, as well. The precipitation of the Jams Tech looks a little more accurate with slightly below up there and above out here. Um, but again, I don't think that's all that accurate as well. The European computer model, the monthlies came out and I think that has the best handle on snowfall predictions, or, or excuse me, temperature predictions. But we don't have access to that. Uh, you, have, you can find that on Weather Bell, I believe it is. Um, hey, maybe we'll, we'll uh, install some of that in the future. Um, may, maybe make some models or something. But anyway, that's what the models are saying. Again, my forecast is for temperatures, there you go. And for precipitation, there you go. And snowfall, there you go. So that's what I went into the forecast this winter. If you like videos like this, go ahead and uh, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe as well because we got videos all throughout the week. On Mondays, we got state of the weather addresses where we have forecast breakdowns across the North America. We look into the long range as well. We look for storms and you can follow along right along with me even if you are a beginning weather enthusiast. Wednesdays, we got tutorials, Weather Dakota TV for the average weather enthusiast, for the beginners out there. And we're gonna teach you how to use models and all sorts of things. Fridays, we got surprise videos like storm chases, uh, just surprise videos every, uh, every other Friday or so. so Go ahead and subscribe, and again, if you haven't seen my actual forecast with the maps, go ahead and check this video out right here or look in the description below. Subscribe, and I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you soon.